Hey guys, welcome back to a new video. In this video, I'm going to talk about the new state flow, which is a replacement for live data that also requires a little bit of knowledge about flows itself. So if you don't know anything about flows, then check out this video here first, where I talked about those in general. And just to give you an answer to this title, no, live data is not deprecated. You can still use it, it still works fine. And state flow is just a new way of doing that based on coroutines. And you should just definitely check it out and see if you actually like it more as live data, such as I do. So I already set up a basic project here with view binding implemented. We don't need to do that here in the video. And also the activity main layout. I will just show you how you can use state flows in combination with such a, a login screen. So how we can actually use it to observe our UI state with a view model and all that stuff I will show you here. So I opened my emulator here. That is what we're going to do. We can log in here, for example, Android and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Click on login, a progress bar will show up. And after two seconds, or I think it's five seconds here in this example, it says wrong credentials. And if we enter the correct credentials, click on login, it will tell us successfully logged in. So I will show you how you can do this without live, live data, but with a state flow. So just make sure to visit this video's description and just get this um, initial project here with these dependencies for the view models function here, architectural components and coroutines, of course. Flows are entirely based on coroutines. And of course, just this layout here. So what the heck is actually a state flow? A state flow is something that was implemented in the latest Cruteens version here. So in this um, 1.3.9, I think. Maybe a little bit earlier, but one of the latest versions, definitely. And it's basically live data that is based on Cruteens. So it's not entirely the same as live data. So one difference would be, for example, that a state flow needs to have an initial value. Live data does not need to have that. So the advantage is that if we have an initial value, then there is always a value inside of that state flow. So it can't be null at any time. And also a state flow will remain active when your app is in background, um, not just like live data, which will become inactive, but with a little bit of setup here, we can accomplish the same with state flow. And also one big advantage here of state flow is that we can use these powerful flow operators that I talked a little bit about my video um, about flows, but that is something that you just cannot do with live data. So you can really transform the result before you observe it. And well, I know there are these live data transformations, but with flows, you can really do a little bit more. So let's get into it and actually create our main view model here in which we will handle the business logic. So the actual login process in which we will check if the password matches or not. And from there we will emit so-called events to our main activity. And here we can observe on those events, check according to which event just happened, and then just update our UI as we want. So new Kotlin class, main view model, um, select class here. That will inherit from view model, of course. And in here, we will now create our state flow. So usually when we use live data, we had one mutable live data and one immutable live data that we exposed to our activity, to our fragment. And we will do the same with our state flow. So there is a mutable state flow. We call that private var val actually underscore login UI state. So this state flow represents the UI state of our login component. And that is a mutable state flow. You can see that takes a value T and that is not nullable. We need to pass that. With live data, we could simply leave that constructor empty, but with a state flow, we need to pass an initial value. So let's choose that. And here we actually also need to specify the type of element we actually emit here with the state flow. 
well, which type do we actually want to emit here? That will be a custom type. So what we will do is we will create a sealed class here for all of the events that can happen here in the login process. So sealed class login UI state. And if you don't know what a sealed class is, that is similar to enum. So we can actually define more classes inside of that sealed class. And only those classes inside of this class are allowed to inherit from this class. So we can basically only define UI states here in this block. And first of all, we want to define a state or an event that we want to emit when we successfully log in. So that will be an object because that doesn't need any parameters called success. And that can now inherit from a login UI state. That wouldn't work if we would take this object, move it out of here. You can see then we get an error because the success class inherits from login UI state, but it's outside of that sealed class. So always use a sealed class for that. That's just a good practice. And let's actually define the next event we want to emit. Well, when we log in and the credentials don't match, then we want to emit an error event here. And that will now be a data class error because that will take a val message here so that we're able to also emit a message with that event because there could be multiple different errors and each error has a different error message. So we want to be able to pass that here in this class. And that also inherits from login UI state. Then we will have an object for loading. So when our login is actually loading so that we can show the progress bar properly. And we also want to define an empty state because we need to emit an initial state here, as I said. And if we would only have those three events here, those are not real events that we want to emit initially. So we don't want to initially emit a success state that we successfully logged in. We don't want to emit an error because there was no error. And we also don't want to emit loading because we're not loading yet. We need to click on that button first. So that's why I create such an empty state here that we can pass by default. And in that empty state, we will just do nothing in our main activity. So what we can do now, we specify that this is a mutable state flow of type login UI state. And the initial state is login UI state empty. And we also get a warning here because that belongs to the experimental coroutines API. So we can press Alt plus enter and add that annotation to our main view model. So that's our mutable state flow here that we can actually change the value from. Now we will have the immutable state flow that we will expose to our main activity. So login UI state without an underscore. That is a normal state flow of login UI state. And we set it to our login UI state with an underscore. And then we can create our function to log in a user that takes a username and a password. And we set that equal to vmodelscope.launch. I will just use a coroutine here that is not actually necessary here but I just want to simulate a little delay so that we can see the loading animation because we of course don't do a real network call here. We rather just simulate it. So the first thing when we click on login, we want to set the login UI state dot value. So very similar to the live data to our loading state. So we can simply now emit the loading value here. And the moment we do this, our main activity will be notified that we emitted this loading state and it can simply show the progress bar. Then here we would do our real network call. We delay that routine for two seconds, import delay. And here we can do our validation. If username is equal to, let's say Android and the password equal to top secret. Then we want to accept the password and username combination. So we set login UI state dot value to success. And else we want to set the login UI state dot value to error. 
um, not this error, to log a new I stated error. And here we can now pass an error message. So wrong credentials. So in a real app, you would have multiple um, if branches here. So you could also check if the fields are actually empty, then you could emit the error message. Oh, your fields are empty and so on and so forth. So for each different error that could occur, you emit a different error state here. So that's it for this main view model. Now we want to go back to main activity, get a reference to that view model by view models like this. And how do we now observe on these events that come from our view model? For that, we now need to launch a coroutine just to collect that flow. So state flow is just a normal flow um, that we can collect the values from. And we want to do that in lifecycle scope, of course. That launch when started, actually, we don't want to use launch here. If you just use launch here, even though that is that, that happens inside of lifecycle scope, your flow will still collect even if your app is in background. So it will still update the UI if your app is in background and that can lead to crashes. You always want to use launch when started here. So I mean always if you actually want to collect a, a state flow here. So if you don't know this function, it will just launch this coroutine when this activity's lifecycle is in the started state. So what we want to do here, we want to use our view model our login UI state and we want to collect that flow. And here you can see we get these login UI state events we define in our main view model. We first want to get rid of this warning, pressing Alt plus Enter and adding this experimental coroutines API annotation here. And now we can simply use a when expression, check if that event we got is a success event, for example. Then we want to do this. If it's an error from log in UI state, we do this. If it's loading, we do this. And else, so in case it's empty, we just don't want to do anything and we just pass unit here. So on the success state, let's simply show snack bar pass binding dot root. successfully logged in and length long like this and we want to hide our progress bar again because after logging in of course that login process is finished and when we get an error we also want to show snack bar but this time not with successfully logged in, instead with our error message that we got from the view model. So we can use our event. And now since Kotlin has the smart cost feature, we know this event here is an error event. And then we can just access the message here. And actually also hide the progress bar. And when we get a loading event, we just want to show the progress bar. Oops, is equal to true. So that is actually it. So this collect function is just the equivalent to a live data's observe function. And with the live data, we often use this um, resource helper class. So we could simply also have this when expression and check according to which event we actually emitted. But I think this is just a little bit cleaner here. It uses coroutines, which I really like. And it's just a cool um, alternative to live data here. So the last thing here that's missing is we actually need to call the login function from our view model, log in, and we pass our binding um, et username text to string and et password text to string. And we actually don't want to do this <laughs> just in onCreate. Instead, in binding dot button login dot set on click listener. 
So when we click on login, we want to call the login function from our view model. And then our view model will first emit the loading status. It will delay the coroutine for two seconds and then check if the username and the password actually match. If so, it emits a success resource, or actually a success um, login UI state. And if not, it will emit wrong credentials. And back in our main activity, we here then observe on these events. So let's run our app and see if it's working. Let's try Android and top secret one. This will show the progress bar and wrong credentials. And if we just use top secret as a password, it shows the progress bar and successfully logged in. So of course, this is just um, an example here with this login function. You can just do this with everything you used live data before just to put your business logic into the view model and then observe on the new UI state in your activity of fragment. So if you like this video, hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, and also comment below if you will actually use this new state flow. Um, I'd be really interested in that. And yeah, if you're looking for more advanced Android courses, then check out the first link in this video's description which will lead you to my website. There you will find premium courses and with the code philip 15 you will actually get 15% off of all my courses. So I'll see you in the next video. Have a nice day. Bye bye.